What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Martian and Ozzy podcast. I am the Martian, joined by my co-host, as always, Ozzy. And this week, we're going to be talking about the Peter Yan versus Marav Devalashvili card going down from Las Vegas, not the Apex. It's happening at uh, the theater at the Virgin Hotels, small cage, 14 fights. And I'm excited to break some of these down. How are we doing this week, Ozzy? Bienvenidos, mi amigos. Um, another Mexican champion. That is three world champions from Mexico. I believe puts Mexico at the top UFC in terms of nationalities that have a UFC belt. Pretty mm. impressive from our brothers down south, um, I will say. And Martian, you will know, I did call this very, very early on. And the Mexican ROI has been absolutely tremendous. And they've got a few more on deck coming through. Um, so good stuff. Last week was great. Um, a lot of the sides, I think, that both you and I were on. Um, were good live prices as well. Rickus, um, who else was in there? Uh, uh, Rebos. Even though I was kind of lukewarm, I ended up be, uh, being on Rebos. Um, who else was a good MAB. Ooh, how could I forget about MAB? My bad, brother to the north. MAB, obviously. And Gamgo, um, bro. Tam- Sim- Simon. Uh, Gamgo. Gamgo being plus uh, plus one twenty after round one it was crazy. Um, but it was a good night of fights. I thought top to bottom. Overall, well spread out. We had some finishes. We had some, you know, kicks, you know, kicks to the nuts. We had some decisions, a few decisions. We had some epic finishes. Great card overall. Only, only bad fight on the card, even though with the decision plus 500 uh, came through, was the Cody fight. That fight mm-hmm. was absolutely horrible. Trevin Jones almost finished him in the in the third round as well. Like, he, he was kind of close. Not that close, but, you know, yeah. a few more shots. And Cody was gonna go to sleep. He how was, do you think? How do you think Cody mind. even feels after a win like that? Like he he knows he got away bad. by like the skin of his teeth. He has to know like ah, got away with one there. <laughs> that was a horrible performance, and you know the I love that he you know took that path. Um, dude, he was terrified in that third round, and yeah. like I said, Julio Arce would have ended his career. Dude. Well, what there is with no Trevin, Trevin Jones's won. coaches? Like all they had to say is, Hey, go forward and do stuff from round one. Cause the third round, all he, he started going forward and he immediately won. <laughs> Just immediately. Dude, I don't know. Trevin Jones, dude. Like, why would you do that? You're literally the main event or like of the prelims, right? Of a pay-per-view card dog. And he just did nothing in the first two rounds. Did man, fucking like, nothing. you know, I understand maybe sometimes the first round, you're kind of like a little bit slow to get out the gates, man. But yeah, like this is your career, dog. Like you know, you're like 34, 35. Like this is your big chance to you know maybe get get parlay this into a few more fights. But after that, you know, he's definitely getting cut. Like he's not coming back. Yeah, so. Shafka Neil was amazing. I think oh. my, my fight of the year Oof. so far. And then that, the, that, was, that main that, event, we won't even talk about it. We won't even yeah, talk yeah. about it. Terrible read, <laughs> terrible read. I should have you know invested a little more time into. I'm a little busy these days. But um, that Shafkat fight was so good. And, I mean, like we said, Neil was in that fight, and Shafkat just unreal chin. Like, he was – he. I mean, offense was great as well, but we just didn't know the durability that he had. But also, like I said, man, that Henry hoofed in the pocket defense is no good. Like, that, 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 that defense was a little, you know, a little – not surprising to me, but – I would say concerning, but there's not that many guys like Jeff Neal with the hands, so it's probably not going to bite him. But that was a banger of a fight. That was really good. Yeah, two point eight three unit profit for me on track bets. You uh, profited uh, one point two eight, um, going uh, two out of three there. Um, yeah, that Jessica Pene, that was not yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and probably not the ha. best idea. I'm telling Ooh. you, I think I think from now on. Betting forty-year-olds uh, is probably going to be a, a limited approach, but there is one Do attempting today. one. Yeah, I'm going to say there's well, one. one. One thing I will say, man, what is with Tabitha Ricci that she just like scares girls and she's like able to kill time in that in that prone position? <laughs> she's like standing up and you're on your back. Like she's like why? intimidating. Yeah, I don't not understand. Like there was one time in one of my fights that happened to me, and the guy was just kicking my legs. Right, it was a third round or second. Round. It was a second round, and I was like, I got to get up. So I immediately like just kicked down and single legged them and take took them down. But a bad position to be in. Like it makes yeah. no sense. It's like it's yeah, just... it keeps happening in every fight. It yeah. keeps happening. Horrible, horrible. But let's get into this week. Yep, first fight, short notice fight, welterweight division. Carlston Harris taking on Jared the Night Train Gooden, and the the line for this one um, has Carlton. At, let me find it here. Minus three hundred. Jared Gooden plus two fifty. Was supposed to be Carlton Harris versus Abu Bakar. Nurmagomedov, that would have been a fun fight. 
Um, you know, I just think that the the grappling disparity here is probably a bit too big. Harris should be able to out grapple and probably submit Gooden if he gets in dominant positions. But on the feet, man, I, I think Gooden could give Harris some problems. I mean, Harris is is big and he hits really hard, but I think his striking technique is actually kind of wonky. So I, I think Gooden, you know, catching him with a big punch and maybe knocking him out here isn't completely out of the question. And considering it's short notice, I think the dog, uh, it's got to be dog or pass at, at these prices. Uh, no prop prices out yet. So any thoughts here? Yeah, I, I want to see the prop prices here. Um, like you said, Carlson is just a, a bit clumsy, I would say, on the feet. But he kind of weapon, weaponizes it to throw unorthodox punches. Um, so we'll see, you know, how it plays out here. Obviously, Gooden has a lot of power. And honestly, his game is not you know, too bad when he's fighting guys who are somewhat on his level and don't have, like, crazy advantages Uh to him like uh randy randy brown had right with the length and just being a much more complete mma fighter so i i think this fight could maybe be a bit close um but i'd be interested to see uh what uh gooden's responses would be to the takedowns because i think if there was a submission i think it would be kind of like one of those kind of quick ones where carlson gets a takedown or maybe uh you know is able to pull pull this guy down a little bit and then kind of transition to, to the neck in some way um but i would not be opposed to either an over or and under depending on the price here um i think we'll probably get a one and a half right what do you th what do you think we'll get a one and a yeah, half here i think so yeah. so we'll get a one and a half here and depending on the price i think we'll dictate uh which but i'm actually a little interested in this fight but i have not delved in too much uh i will after i see the props yep so we're going to move on to the flyweight division next tyson nam taking on bruno silva long layoff comeback from Silva here and he's the favorite minus 209 Tyson Nam plus 179 so we got the 40 year old flyweight uh clocking in here Tyson Nam any interest on the dog here personally I do not like Tyson Nam in this fight I do know a number of guys who do though but my issue here is you know the Bruno Silva yeah the level of competition a few of the guys that he's uh beat have not been great but I feel like he ha definitely has made improvements in his stand-up game and kind of blending them as well. Um, you know, he is training with Henry Cejudo, and I do feel that I see uh, the influ that influence in his game. Um, but he, you know, is comfortable throwing power shots in the pocket, works in leg kicks a bit, and on the ground, I think he definitely has an advantage here. But Tyson Nam in over, I think, 30, he has 30-something fights, I believe. I don't think he's ever been submitted. Um, both these guys are notoriously kind of like finishers, right? They haven't won a decision in a while, I believe. Um, so I, I personally like Bruno here. I was going to bet him when it was lower and I was kind of just trying to let the line simmer. But nowadays these lines move, you know, very, very quickly, you know, kind of like right after the last card, um, people getting in on it. So I'm going to pass on this one. Um, but I do prefer Bruno Silva overall in this fight. Yeah, this line did get steamed pretty quickly there. Um... Best fight odds is kind of glitching out, not let me see the price. But I think, wasn't he like minus 150, 70? Like it was a like a ago? 155, 160, somewhere around in that yeah. range. A lot and of money. Went to like 185, and then it went up to 200. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with him being the favorite. I mean, the the volume disparity should be pretty significant here. Um, Nam, just bad record overall in decisions. Um, but I mean, I think this fight should be a, a pretty high tempo. I was actually kind of maybe looking at an under here. Um, I don't love it because uh, Nam hasn't been finished in 10 years. Silva has, I think, only been finished once. And uh, that was like a seven second. Um, oh, no, he, he's been submitted uh, or uh, submitted once and uh, KO'd once. But um, that was like a seven second head kick KO like years ago. So I, both these guys uh, historically have, you know, made it to the decision or won by finish themselves. So I don't know. I see it being a high paced fight. I think it should be majorly striking. Um, fun fact, Tyson Nam been in the UFC cage almost an hour has never been taken down, has never landed a, take a takedown. So this should be a striking fight. The calf kick of Silva should be there. Um, and I kind of think it'll be a, a Bruno decision. Um, but I mean, it should be a, a high intensity fight. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked to see this one go uh, end inside the distance. Um, but no real strong read or, or bet for me there quite yet. Next fight is in the bantamweight division. Tony Gravely take it on Victor Henry. Solid matchup here for the prelims. Uh, the odds for this one pretty close with Henry at minus one forty five. Gravely plus one twenty five. 
Um, so I think that Henry is the better striker of the two here by a decent margin. Uh, but I mean, it's, you know what you're going to get from Gravely. He's going to be shooting a high amount of takedowns and he can do that for, you know, the full 15 minutes. He maybe slows a little bit as the fight goes on, but I think he's very capable of putting up, you know, 10 takedown attempts in this fight and uh, potentially wrestling his way to victory. If you watch the Victor Henry fight against Rafael Sunsau, uh, he was pressuring a Sunsau. And he would kind of load up on his strikes. A Sun Tzu would see it coming, and he would just clinch uh, Henry up pretty easily, put him against the cage, take him down. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen that much from, from a Sun Tzu lately. He hasn't successfully implemented his offensive grappling, but he was able to do it uh, often uh, versus Henry without much resistance. So I feel that's got to be a pretty grave concern if uh, you're going into this fight, because I think Gravely is a more uh, capable offensive wrestler than a Sun Tzu at this point. Gravely's top control is not good. He's not the type of guy to to get you flat on your back and win rounds with one takedown. He he kind of lets you up. He lets you get to your knees against the cage, and he'll just drag you back down. So I think Gravely, you know, wrestling his way into a decision here is live enough to where I will say it is dog or pass. Um, but I think you should be looking for a Henry live bet here. Uh, I think he will lose the first round, and he could potentially turn this around and, and win. Um, the second half of the fight. I also think that his, his late round props at plus 800 and plus 1400 are good on DraftKings for Henry there. So a um, lot going on in this fight. I could see it going a lot of different ways, but a pretty fun matchup for uh, the third fight on the card. Or, you know, interesting fight here. You know, you got a fight between two veterans guys almost have 30 fights in their, in their uh, overall careers. You know, I just overall prefer Tony, you know, here in this matchup here. Um, Obviously, you know, Victor Henry, you would say maybe has like the kickboxing advantage and all all these kinds of things. But I think Tony's coming off of bad matchup overall for him in the last fight against Javid. You know, I think he still did some pretty good things overall against Javid, but was just not able to kind of find Javid um, with his strikes, right? You know, kind of, um, you know, came, came up short, you know, there. And then uh, Javid got into his game, was able to counter grapple, counter wrestle, um, but it ended up being, you know, 29-28, right? I think the first round was pretty close, and then Javid had a big round two, and then, you know, kind of carried that as well into a round three. Here, I don't think that um, Victor Henry is going to be able to counter the grappling of Tony in the same in the same way. I think that Tony's conditioning and cardio should shine through here. I don't think he'll get overwhelmed too much by, you know, the volume. And then it's just going to kind of be just a, a close fight, I feel, between two vets. Uh, obviously, the Victor Henry performance against uh, Barcelos, I was on him there. You know, crazy performance, almost 400 strikes thrown, you know, in, in over a three-rounder. So if that guy shows up here, you know, probably is not great for Tony. I don't think that he could, you know, do do a striking, you know, have a striking fight like that. But I don't think he's going to have to. I think that he's going to be able to get in on the takedowns of on um, Henry. Henry kind of, every time a Sun Sal was kind of like fainting or kind of, you know, wanting to kind of get in and do what he wanted, he was able to be pretty effective. Henry was not able to defend a lot of the strikes there, was able, was given up control time pretty easily. And just look to me like a guy who, you know, he'll compete with a, with, with uh, plenty of guys, but I just don't find how he's, you know, close to 60% to be value um, against a guy like Tony Gravely, who's very reliable to shoot takedowns, obviously 10 and 2 overall in decisions, you know, even with the last decision loss of his. Um, and, you know, the kind of fight that he's going to bring out. And then even if he does need to slug it out a little bit. You see, he did get knocked out in this fight, but in the Nate Maness fight, I thought he looked really, really good. Um, so I think the baseline and the median uh, performance that we get from uh, Tony Gravely uh, should be enough here to to pick up a win. And at the very least, at the plus 125 number, you know, I kind of lean towards him uh, as being the right side uh, for a bet. Yeah, Gravely, just a, he's a fast starter historically. One round one off a of Bosch route last fight. So if Henry wins round one here, I would actually be uh, a little surprised. So, um I mean, I think Gravely has to be the side at plus at plus 125 then. Um, so next fight, women's fight, flyweight division, J.J. Aldrich, Ariane Lipsky. Uh, Aldrich, massive favorite, uh, minus 325, Lipsky plus 250. Looks like Lipsky got bet a little bit. I think she was 300 at some point. But um, oh, you're trying to start this one off. You're a pretty, you're a pretty historic uh, Lipsky supporter. I wonder if you have any support for her here. I've been traditionally Team Lipsky. Um, you know, here, JJ, she's just kind of like a stump. Like, she doesn't do a lot of things all that well, but it's hard to kind of, like, maneuver around her. It's hard to put a lot of strikes out on her. 
And, you know, I don't know. Like, is she really going to, is she going to tackle Ariane Lipsky to the ground? I don't know, maybe. But um, I'm not interested in betting this fight. Let's just put it this way. I'm not interested in betting this fight. Even if you were trying to, you know, rely on JJ, or not JJ, on um, Lipsky to fight three rounds, right, to, like, just survive, the price isn't even that good, even for that. So I think it's a total pass for me unless Lipsky goes, like, above the 300 number again. Like, uh, like way above, like, to, like 320, 325, because it's just women's MMA at the end of the day. And, you know, I, I just rather be on the, on the underdog like that against a girl like JJ Aldrich, who she's not particularly quick. Her volume isn't particularly, you know, that impressive. Um, you know, she doesn't have like a whole lot of power and she kind of has, you saw in the Aaron Blanchfield fight where she just kind of fell apart in, you know, in the fight. So... I don't think the girl's very that reliable. She's eleven to five. You know, it's not like she's that great. She doesn't even have a reach advantage in this fight. So it's all predicated on her. She's never won a fight by submission. So it's all predicated on her taking Arian Lipsky down, maybe pinning her against the fence or the clinch. Um, so I don't think that's a very reliable path. Um, but uh, and Arian Lipsky, ninety four girl, maybe it's her time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, I don't know. I guess the line is. I wouldn't say right, but I mean, Ariani's think... never been submitted either. People are saying like, "Yo, submission." You know, I, she's never been submitted. Aldrich has never gotten submission. So yeah, I still think it's probably value. I mean, it's bet, been bet down to eight to one on DraftKings, but when it was it was fourteen to one earlier, I think that's good. I just think that it that <laughs> we're we're probably gonna see Aldrich hit a takedown here or two here, and if she gets on top, um, I just think she's she's a much better martial artist. I think she's a better striker and grappler. I mean, the striking is close, um, because Lipsky can't have like a big moment or two, but I think like you know functionally, um, if you look at some of Aldrich's recent performance, I thought I think they're actually pretty good. I mean, the the Casey one, I think she got away with a, a decision there but i mean she you know uh the jillian robertson fight i mean really good performance i mean sh stuffed all of jillian's takedowns pretty much and you know won that fight pretty easily so not very relevant in this fight though would you say no completely completely irrelevant i agree i mean if you had to point to a matchup i think it probably would be the courtney casey fight it where it's the most similar or you know sabina mazza which she somehow lost that one uh despite you know <laughs> I think she, yeah, she did really good early on, and then like I don't know, got dropped, and then lost. The, uh, who the hell knows? But um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think obviously we're gonna see a uh, an Aldrich decision here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I agree with you, three to one on Lipsy. And this is the Demopolis was in on short notice, up a weight class, and she was almost the same price as Ariane Lipsky. Yeah, I, I just think probably the market's overreacting to Lipsy getting finished by Cachoeira too. I mean, that was bad, but it was it was only a minute. It was a minute. And it was and she had her period. Oh it was yeah, like almost concerned. I mean, confirm. Oh, I, I kind of forgot. And Antonita Shevchenko whomped Lipsky on the ground. Man, she really bad. is. She really is a horrible grappler. It was a long I, time I, ago though. Yeah. But I mean, guys, if Aldrich comes in here and strikes and doesn't attempt takedowns, it wouldn't really bad. surprise anybody. And she's certainly not going to cover minus three hundred without. She has no power. Yeah, he's never hurt someone with a punch. I don't think. No, and I mean it'll it'll be certainly closer than minus three hundred. So if you're confident, then that Aldrich wrestles, then sure she might cover. But I'm 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 not. Um, so next fight, uh, bantamweight division, Mario Bautista, Guido Canetti. Kind of strange matchmaking here, for being honest. Um, so we got Mario Bautista, huge favorite. I think he's minus 900, 950. Kennedy coming back, plus 650. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, strange matchmaking. Mario ran through a few guys, submitted them, and uh, now they're giving them like a, like a, almost a step back in, in Kennedy. Um, you know, Kennedy is an, an, an all right fighter. Obviously, he's ancient he's like 43 years old but he's still pretty quick and you know opportunistic for his age don't think it's really going to matter here i think he's going to have to finish mario in round one or else he's going to be you know in, in deep deep shit here uh but i think he's tough enough crafty enough to survive round one here i know bautista has submitted two guys back to back in round one um benito is right at the buzzer though uh so I think Kennedy can survive round one here, and then he'll get finished in two three, which means Mario Bautista round two plus four fifty. I think that's the round when it will happen. Round two four fifty. I would put like a a bet on that, and then have okay. even a smaller bet on Mario round three plus a thousand. But I mean, I mean four fifty for I think he really is going to get finished in round two. So I like that price on Mario. Yeah, interesting. I mean, 
reason that uh, Mario's getting this fight is because he is like Sean Sean O'Malley's like main training partner. We know when you get into like title contention or you get the belt, your friends start getting favors done for him. And this is one of them. It's like Mario set you up nice show and win money here. Get a bonus potentially here if you do something cool and go get him, Tiger. And that's what happens. Um, it just is what it is. And I think that's what's going to happen here. I, I will not add in any more thoughts than you put in. Other than I feel like, man, oh, man, submission is even money. Wow. Yeah. No no good. So this is a bathroom break fight. I'm even good. money? Oh, man. And it's 110, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember up. before before Mario Falk, uh Kelleher, his sub was plus 500. And I and I wrote, um should be plus 1,500. And then after the fact, yeah, you were like, you uh, good, good take there. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah, they're disrespecting my boy Guido's choke game after he choked out that Boston bum fucking Randy. That was Boston. epic. That was, that was epic. Crazy. That was the yeah, most. I, that right there. 30 years after UFC won, for a guy to look that bad on the ground, completely Cap, should be disqualified. Cap to a rear naked choke with no hooks in the UFC. You should be completely disqualified. At the, at the Bantamweight weight class, Like you have no future, dog. Like Just stop. Just be a training partner. Be like Sean Soriano. You know, become a coach. Maybe. I wouldn't respect um, my coach. I tell you, I wouldn't respect my coach if he tapped like that. Yeah. But, um... And, and, that's and, enough and like, an MMA fight against fucking... Guido Canetti. I, I honestly think Guido will have one moment early on here, like where he hits Mar- Mario with a punch. Guido's and, like, a bad go. dude. Don't get me wrong. He's a he's bad qu- dude. bro for forty three years old. He's quick. He's got he's got some pep in his step. I mean, yeah, I, that's how I want to be. I want to be a short king like the, I'm not short, but be a king like that at like forty two years old. He's sick. Sign me up. Um, middleweight division next. Uh, Cedricus Dumas. Uh, S.D. Dumas, they refer to him as some. Uh, Josh Fremd, um, the odds for this one, Dumas minus 223, Fremd plus 188. The the steam on Dumas is not stopping, guys. I don't know where the fuck it's coming from. I don't know who is betting this guy, but all week, <laughs> Dumas has been getting bet and bet and bet, and I know a lot of people that are on Fremd, and I think it makes sense, but all of them are getting worse prices than it is now. So I don't think anyone knows what's going on with the line movement in this fight. Uh, I don't know. I think they see, you know, uh, uh, a scary guy who's finishing people. You know, they, they're watching these these head kick knockout clips, and they're like, oh, this guy's dangerous. Oh, uh, Dumas won by guillotine in his last fight. Frem lost by guillotine in his last fight. He must be a lock. I don't know what's going on, but let me hear your thoughts on this one. Yeah, I mean, this <clears throat> totally a fight where how much makes sense. You know, Dumas is getting steamed out the wahoo again, even right now. It just hit 223. So we got plus 188 on Josh Shrem. And that's the side that I'm picking at the end of the day. I mean, Dumas overall, um, you know, has a few good, I'm not going to say skills, but I feel like he does have some some things that he's bringing to the MMA game where, you know, I, I don't think he's like a total, you know, bomb and, you know, is going to, I think he'll win a few UFC fights. Uh, maybe against like fellow contender guys, but here I just feel like like he's fighting a guy similar size to him, right height wise. So Frem, I, I feel should be pretty you know ready and capable to kind of either deal with it or kind of just you know like uh, circle away, like not engage all too much. Like the like that kickboxer guy that he fought on the contender series, like that guy was just running straight at him, like to like just wanted to mix it up. Penis, that, that guy. Penis, penis. yeah, penis. Yeah. Um. You know, that was a, also a tall guy, but kickboxer, no grappling game. You know, Frem, his grappling game is not the best, but I feel that because it is so much more native to him, I do see in the transitions a lot more awareness than Dumas. And I just like that he's gone to a, you know, crazy fight with Fluffy Hernandez, where he had to make, you know, tons of decisions in that fight, right? Fluffy had him, you know, just putting them through the grinder, you know, so often. And he countered sometimes. He came out on top sometimes. Like, he was on bot. You know, the, the fight just went everywhere. And that is indicative of a lot of his fights. You know, he does have a lot of quick knockouts, but he does also have some fights that, you know, are a little crazy and, uh, you know, um, show me that he makes... Obviously, the decision he made against Gore to get guillotine was bad, but I feel that he is not—he's not, not going to get caught like, like that against a guy like Dumas. Like the guy gave Dumas that choke this in that last fight, and I just feel that the 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 realms that this fight could go into, I just like Josh Rem at almost plus one ninety, 
Hopefully he keeps his hands up, is able to counter, you know, with some strikes. But Dumas, you know, he's got some good kicks. You know, in the grappling, he also, like, offensively is not the not the worst. But I feel if you put some layers into the grappling, like when you're defending a takedown or some of these kinds of things, you can make him make a bad decision, put him in a, a terrible spot, and end up finishing him. So I like Frem here, and I kind of like the fight to not go the distance. But obviously that fight, you know, that's a crazy, juice. that's a hu huge juice price. Um, but I would try to do some Frem inside the distance props. I think like Frem second or third round, you know, second round is plus 850. You could get 800. I like that a lot. Um, so, so I kind of like that for, for a that small bet to, and put, uh, put along with Frem just on the money line. I agree. Those, those late round props are looking good. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I agree that, that uh, it has to be fremed as the side here. I mean, there's just not enough footage, uh, and you know, good opponents that Dumas has fought. I mean, if we look at the guys that he's fought, I mean, some of them are, are just complete cab drivers and, uh, you know, those, those wins really got to be kind of tossed out. Uh, you know, if you watch Dumas, you know, his highlights, you see him knocking guys out. This guy's actually a better grappler than he is a striker. Uh, I mean, his striking is all over the place sloppy. He actually has an idea of, you know, getting takedowns and taking backs. And he had that one decision win, which I thought was, you know, a decent performance. Uh, yeah, hit, hit high bow. Um, I mean, he outgrappled that guy the whole fight, uh, you know, looked positionally sound at times. So uh, I think Dumas um, maybe getting an early takedown here and putting Fremd in a bad spot is live. I would I would be a little surprised to see Dumas hurt Fremd on the feet. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him get taken down because Frem's last fight, he got taken down. He got his back taken by, uh, by Treshawn Gore. And I think it's something similar could happen here. Um, and that, that's why I'm only going to be going a little light on the, uh, the pre-fight money line for Frem. I mean, I have to take a small bet just because the pricing is wild, but I think there's also a really good chance that Frem will be a bigger dog, uh, in the middle of round one. And that's when you should be looking to add a little more on Frem. Uh, because you know, Frem, I could see it looking like exactly like that Gore fight where he gets taken down early, he stands up, and then he was piecing Gore up. At the end of round one, piecing him up. At the start of round two, piecing Gore up. No idea why this guy decided to shoot that lazy takedown and get his neck caught like that. It was a really bonehead decision. Um, but, I mean, he survived so many deep chokes from Hernandez. I think that that was just a, a freak occurrence with that Gore fight. Uh, and he probably wins that fight more often than not. So uh, Dumas doesn't look like a total fraud. I agree with Ozzy that he probably can knock off some of these fellow contenders guys. But uh, I think Frem is actually a little underrated coming in uh, to the UFC. Uh, obviously had that nightmare matchup and Hernandez had a tough loss in his last one. So I think he's probably just getting under undervalued here. Uh, and um, yeah, I like Frem. To, uh, and those late round props that, that Ozzy mentioned, round two, round three, that's a good idea. Frem also... Uh, Fighting for a new contract as well. 94 guy. Interesting. I wonder I wonder if Cody Brundage is, is still with him in this this fight. Yeah. Oh, uh the best prop prices, by the way, are, are on DK. Framed round two, nine hundred, round three, sixteen hundred. Those are those are juicy. I like those. Um sixteen hundred is pretty good. That's pretty 16, nice. Yeah. Um Next fight, uh, Bantamweight division, uh, great fight here. Two old veterans, uh, Rafael Sansal, Davy Grant. Odds for this one, Grant slight favorite at minus one thirty two. Asansal plus one twelve on the comeback. Um, so really fun matchup here. Um, two very very different fighting styles. You got Grant, who is just a, a pressure fighter, a high volume striker, just goes balls to the wall, and Asansal was very reserved. He's a counter striker. Um, and, uh, you know, both guys coming off good wins, especially a Sun Sal, huge underdog, 350 underdog in that fight. And, uh, just beat, uh, beat, uh, Victor Henry in every area of the fight, pillar to post from start to finish out grappled him, outstruck him. It was just a great performance, but, um, I think that the grant, uh, is just going to be a little more reckless than, than Henry was. I think grant, you know, those, those Patton and grant combinations where he's throwing these looping crazy punches. I mean, it's technically wrong it's technically terrible but it's effective it, it lands on guys chins and it hurts i mean this guy clearly has uh big power in both of his hands so um i think that early on grant you know just those crazy uh those crazy uk boxing angles i think could give uh could give a sun style some problems here i think obviously if the fight gets extended and goes the full 15 um that more so favors the sun style but i just think that grant is going to bring a high 
pace and pressure in round one here. And I think that could make a Sun Sal uncomfortable. I think he could get clipped behind the uh, behind the chin with one of these grand punches. And I think that you're best just best off waiting for a Sun Sal live, seeing his approach, seeing how he's dealing with the early, uh, you know, crackhead energy of Davy Grant. And I think that if it gets in around two and three, it could be good for a Sun Sal. So you're probably better off live betting a Sun Sal here. Um, mentioned it in the beginning of the podcast. I mean, he's a 40 year old fighter. You're only getting plus 110, only slight dog money on him. Uh, and I just think that, you know, that's you're probably going to need a better price for betting a, a fighter at that age, at this weight class, too. You know, the, the weight, the the weight class, lower weight classes are much tougher on the, these older guys here. But Grant, you know, not no spring. Grant's no old as fuck. He's 37, right? Yeah, 37. Um, so, uh, yeah. I guess I'll go with Grant as a pick, not a confident one. Uh, man, these guys are gonna these guys are gonna go to war. Honestly, I think we could see a finish on either side. What are you thinking? So I like Rafael Sunsa. I'm on the other side, Rafael. Um, and now let's just start off with Davy Grant, right? Davy Grant had a very entertaining run in the UFC, going back to like I mean, literally all his fights are kind of pretty pretty exciting. Even some of the ones that he lost, like against like Stalsiak and Marlon Vera back in the day, Gregory Popoff. But, dude, he gets busted up in a lot of these fights. Like, Martin Day broke this guy's jaw. You know, well, Jonathan Martinez had him limping, you know, around. And this is a testament. This is a credit to Davy Grant. Tough bastard. Never stops coming, right? Like, always is looking to win the fight. Like, he could have won the fight against Marlon Vera. Just, you know, it ended up, you know, Marlon Vera just pushed harder in the third round and ended up, you know, kind of fucking him up there. Same thing against Yanez. You know, he kind of does, like like you said, the, you know, switching switching the stances, throwing the hooks and the uppercuts and all those kind of things. But a few things I like on the Rafael Sunsau side. Feints. Time, the guy has great timing. So not only is he great at freezing you with the feints, but then he is also good at kind of like catching the rhythm back again. To, to be able to land the strikes and make the feints, you know, effective. Secondly, Southpaw can fight from Southpaw and Orthodox stance, where Davy, uh, Davy Grant has not fought too, uh, too many Southpaws other than Marlon Vera. And I do think that Marlon Vera, being in that Southpaw stance, kind of did mess him up with his range a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, and I feel that uh, Sun Tzu with kind of like the speed, the quickness, the timing, and the fact that he is kind of like a three-dimensional fighter, including the clinch is going to be is going to bode well for him here now i am aware of the all the strikes and you know the the intensity that davy grant brings in the, into the, the cage a lot of times but a lot of times when he's throwing these hooks yeah he he'll c connect with you but a lot of times they're just landing on your guard you know very often if you're aware and Rafael Sun Tzu is one of the most aware cerebral and you know guys that comes in with a game plan uh one of the the best in the sport um, and David Grant does not have the speed like Ricky Simone or Cody Gar Garbrandt have kind of in the hand speed aspect of it that I think will for sure clip Rafael Sunsau. A lot of times he's kind of hitting you with like the third or fourth shot because you kind of think that he's done with his combinations. Um, but I don't think that's going to be an issue here for a Sun Uh, he did also his camp once again in Vegas with, uh, Eric Nixick and Extreme Couture. They underrated uh, have one of the like best rosters of bantamweights in the UFC. They got Saeed Nurmagomedov, who's fighting uh, this week. They got Patchy Mix, who's getting ready for a title fight. They got Marab over there, you know, who finishes his camp. Aljamain Sterling. All of these guys that are that uh, Rafael Sunsau is getting in work with, and he's local as well. Whereas Davy Grant is coming from the UK and all these kinds of things. Obviously, he's familiar with you know Vegas. I'm not trying to say otherwise. A, a bunch of his most recent fights have all been in Vegas. Um, but I like a Sunsau here. I bet him at the plus. I think plus one twenty five or plus one thirty. Uh, let me check. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, plus one twenty four overall. And you know, I'm very open to adding to him live. And I just feel like this is much closer, should be much more like a Sun Tzu favorite here. But we'll see if, you know, I, I'm eating crow on that. It's not a huge bet, 1.35 units. Um, but I think overall, if Davey, if Davey gives any opportunity, especially on the ground as well, a Sun Tzu should be able to consolidate position, look pretty good. Davey's just kind of like a wild, reckless fighter where, you know, I, I know you said you like that compared to Victor Henry, but I feel like Rafael Sun Tzu is like the prototypical guy to capitalize on 
someone being reckless. You saw in the Corey Sanhagen fight, Corey was kind of getting a little bit, you know, uh, out of the box, let's just say, with some of the reactions and stuff like that. And, you know, Sunset was able to get on, you know, get, get on top of him and stuff like that. So I feel he'll get a takedown here. He'll put uh, Davy Grant on his back, kill some clock, use that grappling advantage, and uh, win a decision. So I like... I think I'm going to bet fight ends by KO at plus 225. I mean, these guys are going to box. I could see Grant an early KO. I could see a Sun Tzu, a late KO. And Grant's I mean, hands I, are down all the time. Whenever he's throwing those strikes, he does not bring those hands back to his face. Yeah. And and I mean, a, a Sun Tzu still has really tight punching uh, technique. I mean, he, he, he has really good eyes in there still. So yeah, I think, you know, some of those big loopy shots from Grant, I mean, a Sun Tzu could just come, you know, right down the middle with them and uh you know hurt him so ends ends ko 225 on on dk i think i'm gonna throw a half unit on that um next fight uh is the last fight in the prelims heavyweight fight lucas brezky taking on carl williams uh fairly binary matchup here but uh williams minus 250 brezky plus 210 any uh, interest in betting this heavyweight fight i've been thinking about this one you know uh carl did a good job in his contender fight, right? Mixed in the grappling uh, pretty well. And he uh, uh, reminds me of another guy who's fighting on in a different promotion, uh, Linton Vassell, who long time was at light heavyweight, moved up to heavyweight and kind of started being able to, you know, uh, implement grappling and stuff like that. And I think that was the case here because I don't think this guy has like a wrestling background. But he was just tenacious with them, you know, was able to work them in really, really nicely. Um, but I do feel that this fight is not like a, a, a run, like a runaway fight for him because Bredsky, although he lost that last fight or yeah, lost that last fight. I don't know what happened in there. Um, I, I, I bet on Bidet and I was, you know, totally sure that uh, Bredsky won that fight. Um, but overall, the thing with Bredsky is I think that he offers a little bit more in terms of the grappling. Then I think people are, I don't know if it's giving them credit for or just aware of, you know, we haven't seen it too much. Obviously, you haven't, didn't see any of it in his last fight. In the contender fight, you saw a little bit of him on top. But I think overall, his first gra his first martial art was actually uh, jujitsu. And he actually did some like actual like jujitsu tournaments. So when I'm saying that, I still do think that Carl will get in on takedowns. I just don't know if he's actually going to finish this fight um, because, like, some of the ground upon that he throws looks absolutely harmless. Um, he is kind of scary on the feet if he is able to kind of maybe do some of those fake takedowns to, to throw on big, big strikes, uh, you know, overhands and stuff like that. But I just feel the grappling background of Bresky, which I believe he has, um, will allow either him to uh, have this fight be a little bit more drawn out or um, able for him to counter grapple maybe later on in the fight. Um, obviously, Carl looked great against Jimmy, who, but Jimmy has no grappling outside of wrestling, and it's debatable even if he has wrestling after watching that fight. But he's also like 260 pounds, very stiff, um, whereas Bredsky and Carl are very much closer in size. So I th think potentially this could be a good fight. Um, but I won't bet on Bresky just because like some of his strikes that he throws is kind of a little awkward. Uh, you know, it kind of takes he's a little slow on the feet. But I actually think this fight is going to go the distance overall. I just I don't think that Carl's going to get positions to finish him on the ground. I could totally be wrong. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I took a little play on the over at uh, minus one fifteen. Yeah, I um I agree. I also bet the exact the over at the exact same price. Um, and talk about that. I no, we didn't. Uh, yeah, you probably you probably tailed me for real if we're being honest. But um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Uh, Bresky just doesn't hit super hard. You know, he's like a volume puncher. Uh, honestly, incredible cardio. I mean, this dude he threw a ton of strikes in that that Budai fight. Um, and if the fight's on the feet, you got to think bresky has got the advantage. But you also got to think that Williams will be going to the ground. Uh, you know, pretty consistently in this fight. And uh, if Bresky's one fight, man, he looked bad on the ground. Uh, uh, Kita, I think it was. Um, it was Kita's actually not bad though. I mean, well, he's yeah. got a lot of experience, at least. Yeah, he, you yeah, never he know wild. those fights. Those fights sometimes can be scripted. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I mean, I, I still think. I still think. 
the guy's defensive gra- uh, wrestling probably is not good. I mean, the heavyweights, most of their defensive grappling sucks. Um, so you got to think that if Williams gets takedowns, it probably will be the round. Hopefully he doesn't submit them. But Williams, man, he looks really lay and prey to me on the ground. I mean, he, if you look on his his amateur fights, five wins, all five by decision. He's only had uh, two or three, two finishes uh, on his pro record. One of them was uh, an injury. So uh, I, I think that the Williams will get the takedowns. Small cage, obviously, got to be a big advantage for Williams here. Uh, but I think it's just going to be the lamb prey fifteen minute decision. Um, so uh, hopefully, these guys have a lot of time killing clock. Maybe some time just staring at each other on the feet, some time in the clinch. And uh, I guess it could be sweaty if Williams is just on top of them every round at the start of the round. But I still do like the over. Uh, I see some people betting uh, round three round uh, or decision for Williams. Uh, you can bet that prop like plus one thirty, I think, on some some sites. For the that's, record, that's probably... Brusky is a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's good to know. Yeah, I, I I agree with what you said about Williams, like just opportunistically re- wrestling. I don't I don't think he came from that background. <laughs> Fucking hilarious that he fought Penn State wrestler and then just completely dogged him in the wrestling. Insane. of that I mean, fight. this guy didn't defend one. He didn't look. He didn't have one good defensive reaction. No, that guy looked like he did not train for that fight at all, Lawson. Um, so that was bad. But um, moving on. Uh. Amazing fight here uh, in the next uh, kicking off the main card. Uh, six fight main card uh, starts early too, right? This thing starts at like 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, two guys coming off the contender series. Uh, Vitor Petrino, Anton Turkulage. The odds for this one are pick a minus 110 on each side. And here's the thing, guys. Some people might not let, like betting on low level fights like these, binary fights like these. Guys. You got to pick a side in this one. I mean, there's tape out there. Both no, you got to bet this one. You got to bet. This you got to. You got to, bro. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, like it's it's striker versus grappler. Either Vitor is going to knock him out or Anton's going to take him down. And there's plenty of footage out there to to determine whichever one you want. Um, but for me, I'm going with the grappler because, you know, just historically speaking, uh, grappling is more reliable than striking. I mean, if if you have a fighter who is relying on keeping the fight on the feet and you have a fighter who's relying to keep the fight on the ground, I'm going with the ground fighter the majority of the time. Not all the time, but we're at pick them here. We're at 52 percent. I'm I'm taking the grappler in this one uh, with Anton. Not a whole lot else to say. I mean, Petrino, I don't even think he's that great of a striker. I don't think Anton's going to be in like imminent danger on the feet. I mean, look at look at Petrino. I mean, he was going toe to toe with uh, Bellato in his last fight, got dropped in that fight. Antogulov, if you guys remember, the real day one fans remember Gadjimrad Antogulov, legendary UFC run. This guy, Antogulov, was piecing Petrino up in the second round of that fight. I mean, he was he was taking him down. He was outstriking him on the feet. And I mean, it, just go back a few a few wins. Petrino's wins: zero and zero fighter, zero and six fighter, one and seventeen fighter. He is clearly a pa- a fighter with a padded record who has fought complete bums. He's only really had a few real fights in his career. So, oh, Anton, uh, deep amateur background, guys. He's fought in I M M A F uh, for years, um, and you know he has. I think 10, 10 wins is an amateur at the highest level. Uh, so That's I just the think that there's way <laughs> that that is the highest amateur level, bro. Um, maybe not as high level as the Northeast. Like, yeah, the there amateur. you go. There you fucking go. <laughs> I'm, give me Anton, bro. Give me fucking Anton. I'm going with the Swede in this fight. I love it. You know, I was looking at this fight and it's funny because both these guys in the contender fights, like I bet on Anton and I think I bet on Vitor as well. But Vitor was like, hmm, like I was looking at the Hodolfo guy and you know, guys named Hodolfo that are Brazilian. You kind of have to give him a second look overall. Um, but that was a crazy fight. I mean, you know, that guy's actually fighting this week as well. Um, he's fighting uh, in uh, LFA. Uh, Who is the, the guy? That, no well, way. The guy that Vitor knocked out. The Hodolfo. Oh, Blotto. Yeah, yeah. He's fighting the day before. He's fighting on Friday, um, tomorrow. Um, so that's actually funny. But um, what one thing I've been looking at though for this fight is the over and a half because Anton, even in that contender fight against that, literally that guy's a bus driver. You know, no offense to bus drivers, but even in that fight, like he was getting these takedowns and just snaking to the back and stuff like that, but. The grappling was not like crazy dangerous. 
overall. You know, I, I do like some of the things that he does. He's a little crafty with um, some of the ways that he kind of circles around to the back and kind of snakes his way around there. And some of the stuff that he does on top with like tying up legs and stuff like that, I, I kind of like it. Um, I also don't know if he, like physically, if this dude Vitor gets away from him, you know, later on, if if uh, Anton is using a lot of this energy, maybe holding them against the fence or, you know, they're maybe like seated, you know, at the base of the, the cage. Um, I think that Vitor could absolutely knock this guy into another dimension. But Anton looks looks tough. You know, don't, let me, don't get me wrong. But I think I will try to put a little punt on this over and make it sweaty. I, I, th- I hope it's sweaty. I hope that there's like two knockdowns each or something like that. But it's been going down. It was minus 190, and now it's minus 160. So I'm in on the over small bet. What do you think about that over? I think it's good. I mean, I think it's correlated to uh, Anton, honestly. Think about um, this. Anton, exactly. Yeah, well, I prefer Anton in the fight. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, we I kind of missed the boat a little bit. He was, you know, on the on the other side of plus money. But look, he's um by submission. Anton is 8-1 to one on or 6-1, to one, excuse me, on FanDuel. Um, and I just don't feel that he's going to easily submit Vitor. So if worst comes to worst, someone gets finished in like the first like minute or two of the second round and I'm pissed, but it'll give me a sweat. So I'm good with that for the opening fight of the main Yeah, I, I agree. So his, I mean, his sub is, I think if you look on his method of victory, it's the least likely outcome, but that kind of is confusing to me because I mean, he's a grappler. He has There's no way he's uh, knocking a guy out. He has six subs on the regionals. He has uh, two subs as a pro. So, I mean, the guy goes for subs. I mean, I don't know why hit the sub is the least likely way he wins. Um, uh, so, yeah, I like, I like Anton. Just so, you know, like to win a unit, 1.05 units. Um, next fight, uh, I got to bet on this fight, too. Uh, Ricardo Hamos taking on Austin Lingo. Oh, wait, no, excuse me, I messed I messed up the order. Let me keep the order here. Saeed Nurmagomedov taking on Jonathan Martinez, Bantamweight division, uh, Saeed minus 265, Martinez plus 225. Pretty high-level fight here. Any thoughts for, from you here? Yeah, so obviously this, um, if if uh, for people that aren't, you know, on MMA Twitter or in Discord or anything like that, I just want to let you guys know, this is the main event of the, of the fight card overall uh, for a lot of people. Um, and it's probably the best, I mean, it's the, all right, it's not the best fight in the card, but it's a pretty damn good fight, um, between two guys that I didn't really see them matching up. Usually they kind of keep these Russians fighting like Europeans and then they'll fight like a fellow Russian, maybe here and there, throw in a Brazilian, you know, along the way, but not really, you don't see them fighting guys like, uh, Jonathan Martinez, but I'm also one of the guys that I hate Saeed, uh, Saeed Nurmagomedov, like from his first UFC fight. Where he blatantly robbed me with Justin Scoggins, where dude, that was one of that was a huge bet for me at the time on Scoggins. I think I had him like plus money as well. I don't know still to this day how this guy won that fight. Fortunately, I've been able to get him one time against Ironi Barcelos, and then I bet on him against Mark Striegel, which was the most free money there's ever been. Like they need to bring Mark Striegel back because I remember the Chaz Skelly one. You didn't believe in Chaz Skelly. And I told you, I told you, he, <laughs> I, didn't. I told you he was going to absolutely bludgeon Striegel. Striegel. And, and he walked off into the sunset. That was actually a retirement done right. Skelly, absolute legend of the game. 18, 19 and three in his uh, MMA career. Just fantastic. But let's get into this fight. Um, so what I like about Jonathan Martinez, the guy throws his kicks with reckless abandon. Like he doesn't care. Like his legs is not getting hurt. Um, like, you know, he's just smashing those into bodies, legs, heads, whatever it is. Um, and his process in terms of uh, a decision is actually pretty good because he suppresses volume uh, typically from his opponent. And Saeed Nurmagomedov does not need any suppressing. There's no suppressing needed with him because he just wants to throw spin kicks he's not really um a guy that's kind of like winning these fights with oh you know a lot of process and things like that so i think that jonathan martinez should be good here to be competitive now i'm not sure if he's gonna necessarily win the fight because he's kind of like a weird guy himself he's kind of in his head a little bit and i'm hoping that he has more confidence after that cup swanson fight which is i think why they're giving him this fight because this is a very like nurmagomedov you know you take him out it's a pretty good win. There's definitely a top 15. I'll get him in the top 15 if he's not there already. Um, but like I said, he's got decent grappling. 
his clinch game is kind of where he likes to fight. So I don't think he's going to kind of get caught in that like neck, you know, ninja choke guillotine thing that Saeed likes going for because I don't think his head's going to be in there. And then when they are in, close in the clinch, he's going to be looking to throw knees, elbows, circle off the fence, hopefully, and get back to just kicking ass, which is what he likes to do most. Um, and when he is getting in the good flow, the guy is a dangerous striker. So this this should be a great fight uh, between the two guys. I also will be betting on Jonathan Martinez. And to top it off, my boy is a 94 guy. So we are we got that going for us as well. So I think it is Jonathan Martinez's time. Saeed does train with, you know, all those good guys that I mentioned as well. So I think this will be a competitive one. But we're getting 220 on a competitive fight, maybe coin flippy. Um, and a guy that does way more damage in uh, Jonathan Martinez. He breaks ribs like Cub Swanson. I don't think is still walking after that fight. So let's go with Jonathan. Man, this line is weird, man. It's it really is. All week people are betting Saeed. All week the, the action just keeps coming in. Uh, I thought maybe once it got to two hundred, it would stop, but it's not. It's it does not seem to be stopping, and I will be forced to have a a a. a sizable position on Jonathan Martinez. I think it'll probably be the biggest underdog bet of the year so far. Ooh, baby. And some decision I line, mean, some, some decision. Or it's, no? it's only four to one, you know, right? Four to one is the best price out there. You know, I feel two twenty five money line is probably good enough. Although I do definitely agree that the decision, I was thinking is, of mixing in Jonathan Martinez money line and goes a distance. That's, GGD. That's what yeah. I, I, I thought, I think that's, that mathematically that sounds right but also i think if saeed is winning this fight it probably is going to be like a like i wouldn't say probably I, I think that that if there's like a goofy finish some sort like kind of saeed's last fight i mean he's done it two times recently he just pulled guillotines out of his ass you know i think that could sadly happen here um so uh i mean also, I just think if it goes the distance, man, I think Martinez should be looking pretty good. I mean, what is decision only for Martinez? I'm going to pull that up as I'm talking right now. But, I mean, I just think that um, so they have Saeed at 70% here. I There's no way that Saeed is 70% on the feet. I mean, it's a, it's a completely back-and-forth striking fight. I actually might even favor Jonathan Martinez on the feet. And then on the ground, yeah, sure, uh, Saeed is, is the better fighter, but this guy barely wrestles. I mean, if you look at his UFC fights, I don't think he's hit uh, more than one takedown in any of his UFC fights. Uh, let me let me just double-check that. Um, yeah, never landed more than one takedown in the fight. He's only landed two takedowns in his entire UFC career, spanning almost an hour. So I don't know where people get this idea that he's going to be looking 70% plus here. Is he going to come out shooting more offensive takedowns than ever and top game Martinez? I mean, that would surprise me. There's really no evidence to suggest that he's going to do that. So I think it's going to be a typical Saeed fight where with a lot of spinning attacks and a lot of um, just close minutes. Honestly, this guy has close minutes, close rounds and Martinez. Uh, he's got good boxing, uh, good leg kicks, really good kicker. And I think the guy is just getting steadily and steadily better. Um, Saeed, I mean, wh when has this guy looked better recently? I mean, he was getting dominated versus Kakarbanov. That was, it was impressive how he stayed in the fight mentally and was able to come back and get that choke. But I don't think this guy has ever had a performance in the past few years when you're thinking, oh, man, this guy is getting a lot better. He is leveling up. Even like the Andrade fight, the, that, that shit was close as hell. Um, so Martinez is a good bet. He is. Yep. I think I'll be on it for two units, and uh, hopefully he comes through for us. Um, does he have uh, he have Mexican roots in him, Jonathan? I think so. Some, probably. Some, right? some, somewhere south of the – there's got to be something mixed in there. Plainview, Texas, he's from. So, yeah. Um, next fight is in the featherweight division. Ricardo Hamos, Austin Lingo. Uh, Hamos, big favorite in this one. Minus 365, plus 300. Um, so, I mean, I think on the feet it could be close. Ramos is never really the type of guy to blow people out on the feet uh, outside of, you know, landing that, that mythical spinning elbow of his. But on the ground, I think this is going to be pretty easy work for Ramos. I think he's the better wrestler, much better jujitsu fighter than Lingo. And all I had to do is rewatch Lingo's fight against uh, Yusef Zalal and watch Zalal taking him down over and over and putting him in the submissions. And I think Ramos... Uh, if he if he pursues the grappling here, I think he's fully capable of submitting Lingo. So I got a half unit on sub plus two thirty. Not the greatest price, but I think that uh, I mean Ramos takes backs in almost every fight. So I think that it's going to be looking pretty promising if Ramos grapples here. So hopefully he pulls it off. Uh, anything for you here? Uh, 
not the most interesting fight here. Obviously, Ricardo is, you know, super dynamic. I, you know, I kind of love his game. I like that, you know, that last KO was absolutely devastating. And he's he's done that multiple times. He he's almost killed. I mean, I think the Zahabi fight might be as close as someone ever came to dying in the cage. At least <laughs> cl- at least top five. Because Ben Askren, I think he actually did die in the cage. And so. and I'll tell you, I was supp- I w- I went to that event, the one where um, uh, Zahabi got killed, but I didn't get there until the Vicky Golf fight, which was the Randy Brown Vicky mm-hmm. Golf fight. I didn't. I had dinner before that, and then I got to see Corey Anderson get head kicked when I had tons of money on him against OSP. But it's all right because Corey Anderson he made it back, you know, his next run around in uh, MSG. But yeah, you know, this fight, you know, Lingo's got good boxing. You know, I think that um, I think he'll he'll definitely have control in the boxing. Um, and actually, um, almost shares some stuff with Saldana on the feet in terms of like his kicks are super dangerous, right? His leg kicks. So I think we'll we'll see the fight of the jab uh, and the leg kick of uh, Ricardo Ramos and the spinning strikes, and then the more meat and potatoes, uh, kind of like weaving in and out and stuff like that of Austin Lingo. But I do think that this fight, potentially, depending on what Lingo's timing looks like, and kind of that's an issue. Um, I don't think his timing is going to be great. So I do think that Ricardo Ramos is going to be able to use his speed, right? He's a former bantamweight, use his speed, his feints, and the uh, aspect that he can just literally hit you from anywhere, right? Uh, with the spins, the uh, you know, leg kicks, the jabs, you know, and, and then the takedowns as well. I think he's going to be able to mix that in, get to a takedown at some point, get to a good position. But I would be open to some lingo live, depending on how hard he can make Ramos work early on in the fight. So, okay fight for a main card. Not interested too much on uh, anything, you know, on the prop or money line side of things. But I am open after seeing how gritty lingo was for us, Martian. Don't forget. He was doing that last in that last fight for us. You know how gritty he was in that last fight. You know maybe bringing it to this fight. So great, great fight to watch if uh, your wife's having labor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that um, was great. That's the first thing I would think of is if my wife were in labor, I'd be like, "Yo, Lingo. Austin Lingo and Luis Lingo Saldana. Bingo." <laughs> Um, that was a legendary safe side you performance though. The safe side you've been struggling lately though, bro. I mean. Jeff Neal, Victor Martinez, man, down bad. Um, next fight, a fight that we talked about a lot just a few weeks ago, Nikita Karlov uh, versus Ryan Spann, now uh, at 215 pounds, catchweight fight. Nikita Karlov, minus 166, Spann, plus 146. So um, give me your thoughts here, and give me your thoughts on what the past two weeks uh, has done to your to your thinking about this fight. Has it changed it at all? And uh, Yeah. So Saif, Coach Saif is going back to back on this one. So two guys back to back uh, of his. Um, you know, the, I've cooled a little bit on Krilov just because the three aspects of the fight that are changing all benefit Ryan Span. So you got the uh, weight class being higher. You got um, what else is it? The weight class being higher. It'll be in three rounds now. And um, and then the fact that Krilov, Krilov, yeah, Krilov was sick in his last fight, you know, in, in the for the last fight. So all three of those things I think are negatives on the Krilov side because the the fact that it was a five rounder, um, I like because even if I do think Krilov would probably get him out of there sooner than five rounds, him having those additional two rounds, like there's no way Ryan Spann is looking good in a fourth or fifth round in a, uh, depending on how that fight was in a breakout. Um, but I do still like Krilov overall in a three rounder. I feel like maybe this uh, allows Ryan Span to be more confident in you know certain aspects that I think Krilov could take advantage of. But I kind of wanted a little bit of a discount because given those three factors changing, right? I think last time I bet him at like minus one sixty and one sixty five, and it's the same right now. So I kind of don't want to do it again with those. I think it adds like variance to a fight that already has variance, right? That already is favored under you know one and a half and all these kinds of things um but i i probably will end up still trying to find a some kind of way to bet krilov um yeah but i'm i have way less conviction you know now with it um and maybe just trying to bet bet krilov live but i i I don't want to i'm not going to get too much into the x's and o's and stuff like that but i i do think it's a negative overall on the krilov side I think so too. Uh, I think it's a you know a slight negative. I mean, I I still think he is the better skilled fighter and should be able to win the fight. But obviously, I think you have to be a little less enthusiastic about Benning Krilov in this spot. 
I definitely think the five rounds uh, was an advantage to him. I think it was unlikely to see the fourth and the fifth round. But guys, ask yourself this. If the fight did get to the fourth round, who do you think would be the fresher fighter, the the, the bigger favorite in the live lines? I, I think it, it, it the, a lot of factors would point to it being Krilov. So, um, and also, the, the thing with the live bet, though, about Krilov is this guy, he's a pretty fast starter. I mean, he won round one off of Ankalaev. Uh, he got hurt early on versus Ozdemir and then just easily overcame it and was the one fucking up Ozdemir at the end of that round. So I think uh, I think Krilov winning round one is very plausible here. And I still got to pick Krilov to win the fight. And uh, the only bet I have on the fight so far is Krilov KO 2-3 at plus 1,000. I mean, I think that's a crazy line on FanDuel to get a, a KO in either of the last two rounds. Um, either of the last two rounds? 1,000? Yeah, KO 2-3. It's a combo price. 10%. Right, for a for a, a two three finish. I mean, it could be sub guys. It definitely could be, but I think uh, you know. No, Krilov's a nasty is, dude. He's gonna fuck Ryan Span up if he gets. Yeah, like if they get mount back mount, I think Krilov is just gonna posture up and throw bombs, and you know, Span might give up the neck, but it's you know, it's ten to one, so I'm I'm willing to pay the price to to see. I think I'll probably go one unit on Krilov this time instead of two units like last time, and uh, I think the Ukrainian power should uh should propel him to victory. Also, guys, this fight is now taking place in March. Uh, which means Black History Month is over. So again, that has to be uh, an advantage for Krilov in the spot. Got to be thinking about factors like this, guys. Um, so next fight, co-main event, um, heavyweight division, Alexander Volkov versus Alexander Romanov. The battle of the Alexanders, the battle of the USSR countries here. Uh, Romanov minus 145, Volkov plus 125. I think Romanov is going to take this guy down. I mean, I think there are, there are two fights to look at from Volkov. One, one good example, one bad example. Very recent fights. Aspinall. Tom Aspinall took him down two times easily. Volkov looked terrible off his back. He got submitted with a straight arm lock. I mean, Volkov didn't even look like he wanted to fight in that fight. Then versus Tabura, he somehow stuffed 16 takedowns. Um, but there's a difference between the takedowns. Tabura is a lot more like methodical and, and steady pace while Aspinall has that, you know, that fast twitch energy and he was able to get him down. And I think Romanov has that same fast twitch energy that should be able to get him takedowns here. This fight being in a small cage is also really good for Romanov, in my opinion. Um, it's just not only do I mean, Romanov provides very little striking threat on the feet, but Volkov would not only have to take uh, to stuff the takedowns in this fight, he would also have to outstrike Romanov, which isn't a, a complete given at heavyweight. But um, only way I can see Volkov looking like a good bet is if he starches him in the first round, because a Vol uh, Romanov, I think, is going to take him down, put him on bottom. And while Romanov is fresh, I think he should uh, out wrestle Volkov without a whole lot of difficulty here. So I think he should probably wrestle his way to winning the first two rounds. I, I don't think he's going to finish Volkov. And uh, I think that means uh, it'll go to the decision. And Volkov, uh, Romanov decision is plus 460. I think I'm biting a little bit of Ozzy's flow here, so I'll pass it over to him. And, uh, you know, I got Romanov by decision. Yeah, so the one bet that I have on this fight, and I like the, the Romanov decision lean slant because 500 is a crazy number for that, is the fight to go over one and a half. So I bet that at minus 160, um, you know, I did bet a little bit at minus 145 as well, but minus 160 is the track side of things. And I just feel like overall Romanov gassed in his last fight. So I think we could see a little bit more of a tepid pace um, from him, especially would be intelligent because he should be confident in being able to take down uh, Volkov. And it would be foolish for him to kind of like rush into it, you know, kind of, you know, not, you know, kind of buy this time and, you know, try to effectively put the guy on the ground. But where maybe you could put him on the ground later in the round where you could finish the round on top. Right. Whereas, you know, if you just blitz in and take him down 12, you know, 12 seconds in, maybe you're going to have to take him down two or three more times. And that's what ended up happening against Tybora. You know, he, he kind of, um, you know, was doing too many of those lifts and, you know, he put him on the ground and he finished with a lot of ground and pound, but that definitely took a lot out of him. Um, so I like the over, um, you know, uh, but I do think that Volkov man could potentially, you know, find his way to, you know, if he's able to stop Romanov at all, it's just like maybe like throwing some clinch strikes and stuff like that. Like, I feel like there, it is possible for Volkov to maybe finish Romanov late, um, you know, 15 to one Volkov in round three, um, 
yeah, the, the seventeen to one by you know is you would only want to take the round three just in case maybe he submits him. But yeah, I think that's the okay bet. But only bet that I've made is the over one and a half, and I had to take a little uh, small bet on um, this uh, Romanov decision just because the the price that it was. But I just don't think that Romanov is actually gonna be able to like mount him and do stuff like that that he did um against uh, Chase Sherman. Like Volkov, he's you know trash on the ground, but he's not trash like that on the mat you know obviously uh Aspinall submitted him but Aspinall is much more of a submission fighter and even there you know he was in half guard and stuff like that like Volkov knows some grappling um you saw against Blades you know he was trying to get up and stuff like that so I think that he should be able to fight off Romanov early on at least a bit maybe by the chances for a l later in the fight but over one and a half I think is pretty fair minus 180 now so you know maybe look for maybe a derivative or I don't know you know you could play lay the juice. I think I would still play it at minus one eighty, um, but uh, but yeah, I think it was a solid heavyweight fight. I don't agree. I bet we bet it last time. I think it was the same price. We bet the Romanov over. And remember, you know, Tabura almost got ten eighty. He was flat on flat on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, but the, 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 they weren't significant strikes he was throwing. They were like he no, was just they like weren't. they're like little pop, you know, popping shots like. Yeah, Volkov is pretty tough. Re... Volkov is pretty tough. Other than when he's he getting submitted, but the, but the way he looked on bottom versus Aspinall, I mean, that he he quit and every, you know that was bad. Aspinall is a beast though as well. Let's not forget, he is a monster. He was, yeah, he was before the knee injury. Let, let's see how he recovers from Curtis Blades. Uh, impressive. Volkov got twenty three knockouts and only two knockout losses. He knocks out a lot of guys. Derek Lewis. Who who else talked about uh, somebody? In... Uh, uh, I think someone like Bellator. Bellator, yeah. Minikov. Um, yeah, I kind of forgot about that that performance against Rosenstrike. I mean, he did bounce. I mean, you could, after that Aspinall fight, you could think, oh, man, Volkov could be shot. But then he did bounce back and just easily dispose easy. of Rosenstrike. Look One at, punch. And look at these Volkov. guys. Like, I mean, some of the, I mean, Chase Sherman, Jared Vendera, Lima. On Volkov. the feet, he's going to butcher, butcher him. Yeah. Um, but if you look yeah, at think... Romanov's UFC fights, like three of them have gone over one or four of them gone over one and a half and two of them haven't a sherman yeah. hasn't and fucking marcos my my birthday twin marcos de lima so i think over one and a half is good um that'll take us to uh the main event bantamweight division peter yan taking on marab devalashvili the odds for this one yan minus 255 marab plus 215 on the comeback your turn to start this one off give us your thoughts on the main event obviously guys i'm biased so listen to what Martian tells you about this fight more. I'm just going with Marab, just because it is Northeast shocks jujitsu. Okay, and that's what's gonna happen in this fight at some point. I hope. Um, obviously Peter Yan, he's he's awesome. You know, he's got great, great uh stand up, you know, a uh, very diverse attack, right? He'll chop the legs, he's got great uh, you know, great boxing, can fight from both stances, you know, great left high kick, left body kick, excellent cardio, has been five rounds multiple times. But, I mean, the grappling is a hole in his game overall, I think, in the aspect of the guys ca that can mix in Deist, shoebox, jiu-jitsu on him. Um, and Marab, he's been steadily looking to improve. He's continuing to hone his grappling. He's continuing to try to work on his striking and the comfort and the, the timing of mixing both of them together. And it's a tall task. It's very difficult. You know, to do that against, uh, you know, Peter Yan. But the aspect that I like is that Rob is such a wild man and he's so crazy. He's so tough that I don't think he's going to be kind of scared of Peter Yan. And I think a lot of these guys, when they get in there against Peter, they're a little scared. They're a little flinchy. They're a little um, hesitant. Um, right. You saw Jimmy Rivera done, doing very well against P uh, P Piotr. Um, and he just starts back, you know, retreating backtracking in the end of end of these rounds and every single round he gets dropped because he's doing that because he's given him space because he's given him you know tons of respect i feel that the first two rounds of this fight could be you know absolutely crazy um but i do think that marab has a lot more to offer than people kind of give him credit for obviously against jose aldo boring fight right just held him against the fence you know clinched you know you know going for takedown and then letting it go and then you know back and forth but I feel like, like I really do feel that Peter is not going to be able to uncork these shots as easily as he had. And you saw it in the Aljo fights, right? In the Aljo fights, he was not able to get his game going like he did against the majority of the UFC competition. Even against Sean O'Malley, he was uh, he was able to get off a lot more 
than someone who has that grappling threat. And even if you recall, Sean O'Malley took Peter down in the first round. You you remember that, Martian? No, I, I already watched that fight. That wasn't a real takedown. That that was that was a takedown, bro. I'm sorry. No, he, he sh- I don't. He I, shot I a double leg on him, and Peter, you know, he sprawled, but Sean cut the corner. He got behind him. That in the boxing tournament, okay, that might have not been two, but if Marab locks his hands around him after that, what he's gonna take him down. Um, so I, I and then do what? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But Marab has been working, bro. He's got great cardio. He's got blood. Ask ask um Marlon Marais what happened with Marlon when they got to the ground. Um, so we'll see if. P- what Rob is able to do, he's going to have to control some legs. He's going to have to be able to use some of the grapevining stuff. There's some of the stuff that I know for a fact he's been working on, okay? is what I'm trying to get at. And I think that we'll see if it's able to be effective here. It's going to be difficult. He's plus 220 in this uh, main event. Um, I think that he will be able to fight five rounds. People are saying that, hey, this. I think that he is going to be able to pace himself in a little bit of a different way recover and i think he's been doing a lot of the work doesn't allow him to be competitive in this fight it's two to one to go to a decision right so everybody thinks that peter's just gonna knock him out finish him easily yet it's minus 200 to go to a decision so i like i like marab here as a as a small play and we're looking for a live live to see what's going on in the fight no 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 i mean marab just he can't win the fight i don't think he really can't I mean, I to me, I think that. I that know, about O'Malley. Remember, people said that about O'Malley. They really did. Don't say that they didn't. Now, don't say that they but did. But that's a, that that's true. Um, now now Jan did win that fight, and he does probably win that fight seven out of ten times. But I mean, O'Malley, he, O'Malley did well. He leveraged his his opportunities there. But um, I just don't think that uh, this the grappling style of of Marab can present problems to to Peter because. She, what is Marab going to do if he attempts if he gets taken? Let's say, let's say, let's say, no, dude, he he does not solidify position on anybody unless you're completely dead tired like Marlon Marais. Marab has not ever like done anything meaningful on top ever. I mean, this guy, uh, he took like he like he fought that bum Gustavo Lopez and took him down 12, 13 times, let him up all the times. I mean, uh, he he just doesn't do anything with these takedowns, so he might be able to 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 get a takedown or two he might be able to push peter against the cage i just don't see what actual offense marab is going to be able to to surmount here because he's going to have to have enough offense to win three out of five rounds because marab sucks at finishing he's not he's not going to finish yawn and if if marab wins it will have to be by decision and that means he's going to have to win three out of five rounds while being the worst striker out of the, out of the two and just not having any ground and pound not having any subs i just don't see the Anything better than Marab holding him against the fence and maybe grinding out a takedown or two? I, I can see that being enough to win one at most two rounds, but I, I don't even think it will win two. I think that it'll be a, a 49 46 for Peter Jan or possibly a late KO, 3 4 5 KO. I see some people being confident in the KO for Jan. I don't know how the hell you could be. This guy isn't a good finisher. Um, he. Marab is insanely tough and you know, Jan just, he approaches five round fights in a very methodical fashion where he's, he's conserving his cardio. He's fought in a lot of five rounders. He, he never really goes for that kill. I mean, even, even versus Jose Aldo, he, he just threw like a steady pace of, of nonstop ground and pound shots. And eventually the ref stopped it. But, um, he's very aware of his cardio, aware of his energy usage. And I don't think he's at any point going to go, you know, balls to the wall to finish Marab here. And I just think that Mar- you're going to have to put Marab out like clean if you want to put him out so i don't think jan um ko is happening if it is happening it's obviously i think going to be in the third fourth or fifth round um but um you know jan sub at 18 to 1 i mean if he has marab hurting uh i could see something like that happen and so i don't know i don't have any bets in the fight i really like i think jan's chances here are um i don't know 77 sure you know so i i think I think it's fair. The, the pricing is everything is fair uh, so far, um, and yeah, I just uh, I don't think I don't think Marab is intelligent enough to win the fight. Also, that's a, that's a pretty good synopsis. Can't of wait. It. I mean, the guy did dive; he dove head first into a, a frozen river. Can't wait. Um, can't, just not that I, long. I can't wait until you're apologizing. He's not going to win, bro. He's we'll not. See, we'll see. And I think deep down inside, you know, he's not going to win. We'll see. 
Plus, and then our 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 heavyweight, our our main event, ROI, bro. Think about it. Think about it. In the gutter. Let's see. Well, exactly. So, so I'd rather take the guy's plus money than you advocating for Peter Young. Well, I'm not avi- I'm not betting uh, either money line here. I mean, but I don't think you find it interesting uh, that the books open this at like minus one sixty? No, I don't find that interesting. I don't think that the. Why? Well, 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 don't you think that Jan being like, oh, he's lost three out they of the open, last four fights? But what fight. I'm saying, they open Jan like minus four hundred against O'Malley. You don't think it's interesting? Yeah. You don't think it's interesting? I don't actually. No, I find I give that no credence. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, it's a big change. But yeah, it's a I big mean, difference. It is. Um, so uh, a lot of bets for the card. I think are looking good. I already uh, already have a few tracked. I'll be adding a few more. Um, but uh, that'll do it for the card. Good Bellator card this weekend. Tofik versus Shabili is an amazing fight. Um, no boxing or Boy anything else going Michael on. Michael Page, that's a, that's a banger. That's a good one. There's like three, four good ones. Um, there. There's a lot of MMA this week. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any uh, any closing thoughts for you here? No, not not too many. I know uh, that that next week, uh, you know, we got the pay per view on deck, and you know, a few good ones there. I think uh, maybe we'll get back to Wednesday uh, release on that one, and then uh, yeah, I'm liking. And what we got for the next six weeks, like I said uh, last time. So let's uh, let's get it going. Sounds good. Uh, thanks. Thank you to everyone for listening. Hope you all enjoy the fights this weekend. Win some bets, and we'll see you all next week before the next UFC event. Peace out, everyone.